What did Adonijah do once he heard Solomon became king and why? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of 1 Kings on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 41 to 53, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 41, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 1 Kings chapter 1, beginning at verse 41. Now Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished eating. And when Joab heard the sound of the horn, he said, Why is the city in such a noisy uproar? While he was still speaking, there came Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest. And Adonijah said to him, Come in, for you are a prominent man, and bring good news. Then Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, No, our lord King David has made Solomon king. The king has sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Baniah the son of Jehoiada, the Cherethites, and the Pelethites, and they have made him ride on the king's mule. So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him at Gihon, and they have gone up from there rejoicing, so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. Also Solomon sits on the throne of the kingdom, and moreover the king's servants have gone to bless our lord King David, saying, May God make the name of Solomon better than your name, and may he make his throne greater than your throne. Then the king bowed himself on the bed. Also the king said thus, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has given one to sit on my throne this day, while my eyes still see it. So all the guests who were with Adonijah were afraid and arose, and each one went his way. Now Adonijah was afraid of Solomon, so he arose and went and took hold of the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Indeed, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon, for look, he has taken hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear to me today that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. And Solomon said, If he proves himself a worthy man, not one hair of him shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent them, down, sent them to bring him down from the altar. And he came and fell down before King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, Go to your house. In this chapter, we are witnessing the transitioning of the kingdom from David to his successor. The reason this is occurring before David's death is because David is sick and evidently had not publicly identified who his successor would be. In the normal way of things, the throne would have gone to David's oldest son, which in this case would have been Adonijah. In fact, Adonijah was making preparations for this. But within David's court, it was known that Solomon, son of Bathsheba, was promised to be king, a fact that Adonijah is likely to have known about too, not only based on his comments in chapter 2, but by his actions here. Adonijah's actions were going on behind David's back, however. Once Bathsheba, though, found out about it, her and Nathan the prophet came to David swiftly, and David acted immediately, having Solomon anointed king even while David was still alive. And that, was, that is what was done in the sight of the people and was a magnificent affair where Solomon rode on David's mule, a royal animal, down to Gihon outside Jerusalem to be anointed. The people pledged their loyalty to him and were excited to have a new king. Now by this statement we shouldn't assume that everyone was present, for only those in Jerusalem had the opportunity to be present at such a hastily executed event. And neither were those following Adonijah present for this anointing, for they only heard of the commotion once they finished eating and had to inquire about it. And when Jonathan, the son of Abiathar, came, a man who had been a messenger for David during Absalom's coup, Adonijah thought he carried with him good news. Why would he think this? Because prominent men usually brought with them good news, while bad news would be delivered by those of lesser stature, in case the one receiving the bad news acted rashly. Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, learned this principle when he had to report on Absalom's death, though David did not act rashly towards him. Jonathan, though, did not come bearing good news, but bad, for he had to report that David had made Solomon king through the hand of Nathan the prophet and Zadok the priest 
and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. The people who witnessed it have accepted Solomon as king and are rejoicing over this fact, and Solomon is now sitting on the throne of David, not king in name only, but in actual fact. Jonathan even reports that David is happy in praising God that he was able to see the next king of Israel reigning with his own eyes, signifying that this act wasn't done behind David's back, as Adonijah had done, but with David's full approval. And so, with David approving of Solomon, and the people approving of Solomon, fear swept over Adonijah and all his guests, for Adonijah had attempted to take the throne without David's permission. Would Solomon execute Adonijah and all those who followed after him for this act of treachery? Well, many didn't want to stick around to find out, so everyone but Adonijah fled. Adonijah himself ran to the place where the altar was and took hold of the horns in the altar. Now, why would he do this? Because when one did so, they were placing themselves at the mercy of God, desiring mercy be shown to them for what they had done. And even though we don't read of this specifically mentioned as a way to plead for mercy, we do read of it by inference. For Exodus 21 verse 14 says, But if a man acts with premeditation against his neighbor to kill him by treachery, you shall take him from my altar that he may die. So while this verse doesn't specifically mention using the horns of the altar to plead for mercy, by stating that murderers were to be taken from the altar and be put to death anyway, we can conclude that, like the cities of refuge, grabbing hold of the horns of the altar was a way to plead for mercy in certain cases, but not in all cases. What Adonijah was seeking was that Solomon not put him to death for essentially what was treason. And since Adonijah hadn't killed anyone, the choice was up to Solomon, now acting as regent king to decide what to do. And so he said if Adonijah proves himself a worthy man, in other words, he will serve Solomon loyally and not seek to form an insurrection, then Adonijah would be allowed to live. However, if he would not do this, then he would die. For his actions of t trying to take the kingdom from David was an act of speaking against God's anointed, an action that would go against Exodus 22 verse 28, and an act punishable by death. That Solomon was willing to show mercy here was not an act of weakness, but actually a wise act of strength. Why would Solomon want one of his first acts as king to order to be the order of the death of his brother, even if his brother had tried to usurp the throne? If his brother would repent and accept Solomon as king, since Adonijah hadn't killed anyone, forgiveness could be extended. But Solomon was going to allow Adonijah wasn't going to allow Adonijah to stir the people up against him. That would, be an act of, that would be an act punishable by death. In this, Solomon showed himself to be righteous, willing to extend mercy to the penitent, but swift punishment to those who commit evil. And so, Adonijah's life was spared. For now. We'll see what actions Adonijah takes next, the Lord willing, in the next chapter. But before we get there, we will have to deal with David's final advice to Solomon before his death. Advice we will cover, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. We will be taking our two-week spring break and will return, the Lord willing, on Monday, June 12, 2023. When we return, we'll take up with 1 Kings 2, verses 1 to 12. We hope that you'll come back and join us in that discussion when we will continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.